Hello, welcome to Admiral's Half Year 2019 Results video. I'm David Stevens, I'm Admiral Group CEO, and I'm here today with Christina Nistaris, the UK Insurance CEO, and Geraint Jones, the CFO. David, how was the first half of 2019? It was a very good first half. Uh, typically, Admiral first half in as much as uh, the business grew substantially. We've got almost 10% more customers, that's six and three quarter million customers across the globe. Uh, and turnover was up about 77%. So that's very pleasing. Profit growth, less marked, but some very good reasons for that. Uh, and we'll talk more about those later. Gary, what does the result mean for the dividend? Well, Admiral's policy with regards to dividends is usually to pay out all the capital that we don't need to keep in the company. That remains the case today and typically means that our dividend will move in line with our profits. So as David mentioned, the profits were up modestly in the first half and we've increased our dividend again in the first half, which was a pleasing result. Thanks, Gary. And can you give us an update on the group's solvency ratio? Um, that was also pretty cautious in the way it manages its capital and its solvency ratio. Um, remains the case and our half-year ratio is pretty much in line with where it was throughout 2018. It's around 190%, which for a business like ours is a very satisfactory position. Christina, how's the UK insurance business performing? It's been a good first half. We have saving profits up and our book is bigger. In terms of profits, the, I will highlight a couple of things. First, the impact of the change in the opt-in discount rate, which has uh, implied about less um, 30 million in our profits. Uh, the second thing that I will highlight is the fact that um, we're experiencing very good back year reserve releases, implying that we have very strong fundamentals in our underwriting. In terms of growth, this is a difficult part of the cycle. Um, the market conditions are not great. And because we have a very rational and cautious approach, our, the size of our car, car book has remained more or less stable. However, in our household book, we continue to experience good growth around 20%. We also had some profitability helped by the weather. And also our newer books uh, of ban and travel are doing well. So overall, a first good half. Thanks, Christina. And David, the international insurance businesses continue to grow. What are the highlights and what does the future hold? They are indeed growing and, and that's been one of the most gratifying parts of the first half of 2019, particularly the European businesses, but also the American business growing very fast. And as we get bigger, you think it might get harder to grow, but actually we've seen more rapid growth this half than we did uh, a year ago. We've seen our smallest uh, European operation, Olivia, go through 200,000 policyholders and Mentally, I think that's an important uh, threshold to go through because you're getting to a scale where you can definitely compete. Um, we're also beginning to get big enough and get well known enough in those markets to think about other products. So uh, Homebrella, our home insurance product in, in France, uh, uh, launched in the course of the last 12 months. And uh, that's an interesting uh, new venture for us to go beyond car insurance internationally. But the other great thing about international insurance, particularly the European operations, is we manage that growth while also maintaining good economics, making it another year of profits, for example, in the European businesses collectively. Thanks. And turning to price comparison, Geraint, how are those businesses looking? Well, the results overall for price comparison were positive in the first half. We grew both revenue and profits versus the first half of 18, which is typically the way we like things to go. Um, and I particularly highlight Confuse.com, where uh, revenue was up nearly 15%. Our profits were up very substantially half year on half year, uh, more effective marketing, uh, better comparison experience for our customers, and that's very pleasing to see. Christina, happy customers are at the heart of Admiral's success. How do you ensure we keep them happy? Well, we're very pleased to see that year on year we continue to get fantastic feedback from our customers. We have many initiatives around the business to make everybody very conscious of how important it is to always keep the customer at the front. Uh, we managers listen to calls on a very regular basis. I go around the business giving prices to people who have exceptional performance. And I will even highlight our hearts campaign, which means that um, every time a customer gives us a 10 out of 10 in the survey, we collect a heart and we're having hundreds of thousands of hearts this year, which is great. But I will also highlight the fact that when customers are happy with our service, it translates into more products. So in this first, first half of the year, we have a, a higher retention which means customers like our prices, but also our services. And we have also seen an increase in our multi-car and multi cover products. So happy customers also means happy profits for all of us. David, we've been named one of the best workplaces in Europe again. Just how important is culture to the group's success? 
Well, there are many aspects of, of Admiral's culture which are key to its success. Uh, and one of them is making sure that Admiral's an enjoyable place for people to work. And that's uh, year in, year out, being demonstrated by our uh, winning of various awards, like the Great Places to Work and uh, other awards across the whole group, not just in the UK. And it's been another really gratifying year in that, in that context. Um, only yesterday, for example, we, we won seventh uh, best place to work in mid-sized companies in India for our Admiral Technologies operation, which has about 250 software engineers working for the group globally. Um, so all parts of the business uh, buy into the same ethos and try and deliver enjoyment for the staff that work for us. You asked why is that important? Well, there are a number of reasons why it's important, but I perhaps would highlight one at the moment across the world. Um, there's, there's difficulty getting key skills and keeping key skills, especially, for example, in technology. And so one of the real benefits for Admiral of having a, a great culture and being a place where people want to work is we can retain people better than we need for the success of the business and actually attract people better. I see lots of people when they first join the business and consistently they say one of the reasons why they come to Admiral is because they've heard it's a great place to work. That's such a useful asset for us. And the results presentation features a section on loans. Can you give us an update on what's happening in that part of the business? Well, the loans business is really interesting new business for us. We think hard about where we can apply our skills beyond uh, insurance uh, and we felt loans was a possibility. In the big picture, it's still a small business. 400 million uh, of loans might sound a lot, but actually in terms of market share, it's tiny. And in terms of contribution to Admiral's result at this point, it's tiny. But we did want to give it a bit more profile because particularly our shareholders are interested in it. And because although it's not very big at the moment, I think in five or 10 years, if we manage to lay the right foundations, we could have a really interesting and important business. And to finish, could you each share a highlight from the first half of the year? Well, to me, it was great to see um, so many prizes that we have won in terms of how we treated stuff. Uh, included, for example, we were named again this year, number third, uh, best place to work for women, which is a fantastic achievement. But truly, if I have to only choose one highlight, it would be the strong retention that we're experiencing because it means our customers are happy with the prices, but also with the service. And that, to me, is the core of what we do. Good book. I was tempted to go with Confuse.com which had a really, really good first half, 15% uh, more revenue, very substantial growth in profits. But I would probably go with EU insurance, which grew by 20% or so in top line, whilst maintaining profitability. And um, there's loads going on in all those operations, improving the metrics and so on. So I think that's a, another great achievement by those businesses. That would be one. I think maybe I'd, I'd highlight um the core UK car insurance business, actually, which might seem a bit surprising because in some respects, the results in terms of top line and bottom line are, are pretty flat by Admiral's standards. But when you bear in mind that we've been increasing prices in response to claims inflation faster than the market, and when you bear in mind the, the 30 million Ogden hit that uh, Christina mentioned, it's very impressive to be flat on both those measures uh, in the first half of 2019. And I think it's a tribute to the underlying strength of that franchise and also actually to our historic conservatism in making sure we don't book profits, profits prematurely. Okay, so thank you very much for watching our half year results uh, video and uh, above all, thank you to our customers who've stayed loyal to us. Thank you to our shareholders also. And above all, thank you to our staff uh, for the work they put in to make these results possible. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.